Welcome back to the channel guys. We are off to Cadwell in a little over a week's time and currently I've only got my 355 brake race map from Badger 5 on the car. We want to have a bit of fun. We're going to run it on slicks for the first time in a long time. So I'm going to go out, do a little bit of road tuning and we're going to turn it up to about 1.6 bar just so it's got a little bit more spice for Cadwell. <laughs> drive. I've just loaded some new map files that I wrote today onto the ECU so we're just going to give it a couple of pulls and we'll see how it feels then we'll look at some logs. Right so I've been out and done a few pulls and uh, it's not looking too bad so I'm just going to show you a couple of logs on the tablet now and you can see how it started versus where we're at. Right so this was the first pull, AFR is in yellow and you can see it goes super super rich along here that is 11.2 not cool and um, you can also see boost kind of spikes and then it also shifts here this is where the VVT changeover point is and then gradually drops so if I try and zoom along to our most recent pull. So this is our latest log. So we don't have that spike. We do have a tiny little dip in the boost there to try and fix, which I've done now. Comes up to 1.6 bar here. It's still dropping off at the very top end. So I've added a bit more duty to that. Fuel is not wonderful, but we are on Emerald. So don't expect too much. Interesting I've noticed the 7 PSI wastegate spring will not hold more than 1.5, 1.55 bar at the very top end. So absolutely no danger of the kind of two bar balls out map we used to have on the 660 with an 11 PSI gate. Um, we needed this lower gate pressure to run for the class limits for 750, so that's fine. I'm not too fussed. If I ever want to turn it up, I can put a bigger spring in it again. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll spin the uh, camera around now, show you the last log from the last pull and uh, talk through it. Right, so this is a log of our last pull. And as you can see, boost comes up to about 1.5 bar and it now sits reasonably flat. Fueling still fairly rubbish, being emerald, but it's hovering around the late, mid, mid, late 11s. Um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at with it, really. So we've got about 1.5 bar across the rev range feels really quick. I've been running at 350 brake for God knows how long, so this actually feels really, really quick. It's not going to hold the boost to the top end, so I don't want to spike it low down. I want that feeling of a car that wants to rev out. So uh, yeah, I think that's where we're going to leave it. So that's absolutely definitely not the 500 brake of old. Um, 1.5 bar on a G25 550. Might be 450 if we're lucky. I don't know. But yeah, it's enough for Cadwell. It certainly feels lively given I've been driving it at such lower power for such a long time. Pretty cool to get out and do some mapping again. Haven't done any myself for quite a while. It's all been uh, all been up at Badger 5 on the dyno. Bit of a fun evening. Hope you guys are like the video. A little bit different this one. Like, share and subscribe. I know I said last night I was going to leave it at 1.5 bar, but that's a lie, wasn't it? Definitely a lie. Let's go on with it then. New spring is in, so we should now be 11 PSI just for Cadwell. Then I'll take it out and change it back. Not a job I'm looking forward to. But yeah, it's in, so I might pick this up tomorrow when we do a bit of testing. This might be the worst camera angle ever, but we'll change the spring. We're just on our way to the local airfield to do a few pulls in the daylight. Just make sure we can uh, get the boost dialed in, make sure the fuel. So I'm going to head up to the F5 
Phil, and I will see you in a bit. Okay then, so we are back from mapping and we are all set and ready for Cadwell. So I'm going to jump in the car, um, grab the tablet and just show you a couple of the, uh, the kind of tunes and the tweaks that I've done, show you where we've ended up and what we're going to be running with for Cadwell. So I've taken a lot of the info off here just to make it easier for you guys to see, but this is gate pressure. So we've got full throttle, spools up here to 0.84 bar and as you can see, holds it really nice and flat the whole way across. So that's gate pressure, 0 0.8, 0 0.85 bar, really nice, really smooth, holds it all the way to 8,000 revs. That's probably gonna be 310, 315 brake, somewhere about that, really nice, really drivable, perfect for the wet. So next up is what I've kind of set as a mid boost, nice, drivable, deliverable power. So what you're looking at here is kind of like a mid boost run. So full throttle again is here, spools up to here at about 1.3 bar, and then that steadily rises as we go up to the top end where you've got, what's that, 1.57, so just under 1.6 bar at the very top end. Now that, spooling up with lower boost and then gaining as the revs go up gives you a really, really nice kind of progressive feel to it. Now I'm going to take a bit of a guess and say I think that's probably around 430 to 440 horsepower. Not mega power 500 plus of old, but really nice, really drivable, pulls right to the top end and it feels absolutely epic compared to the 350 I've been racing on for the last year or so. And last, but absolutely, very definitely not least, is going to be the full boost map. Right, so here you go, full boost. In terms of actual top end power, I don't think this is going to be very different to the progressive, but as you can see, boost comes up a lot harder. So we come up to 1.7 bar here early on, then we hold that as flat as we can until it just starts to tail off at the top end to 1.65. It's all a bit of guesswork, but I reckon that's probably in the region of 460 horsepower. Not a massive difference when you press a button, but enough that if you press it on exit, you certainly feel a bit of a shove. Um, knowing what the 550s are like in terms of shaft speed, I'm probably not going to run that very often. I don't want to run this too close to the maximum shaft speed. Don't want to risk doing any damage. And to be honest, after 350, kind of early 400s feels insanely quick anyway. None of that is dyno verified. It's all a bit of guesswork based on previous results and whereabouts I think the car is running at the moment and how it feels. But safe to say it feels really good. Really looking forward to driving it at Cadwell with a bit more power and we're going to be running it on slicks too, which is going to be really good fun. I hope you guys are like this one, and I will see you after Cadwell Park. Take care, guys. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.